there's a great deal of things in the world right now about which we might find ourselves discouraged. There are seemingly folks who want us to be discouraged. And, you know, circumstances on the outside ought never to be the determiner of that. However, uh, a word about obedience is always appropriate. And in this case, it's a word about encouragement because encouragement for us is a command. And I want to look at that command for the next few minutes and unpack it, see what there is for us to learn, and then see what we can do to apply what we learn. Now, a command in Scripture, wherever we find it, is an essential activity or practice. And so we should look at encouragement as an essential activity or practice, something that we ought to be about the business of doing and that we should be about doing it very intentionally. It's not something that's just haphazard or, you know, happens to go by. Um, and I want to start with kind of a negative word, a negative command, uh, it's something that we should not do, but it's it, in the positive side, it's about encouragement. Uh, the word says in Galatians 6, verses 9 and 10, that we should not lose heart in doing good, for in due time we will reap if we do not grow weary. So then, while we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, and especially to those who are of the household of faith. There's a way to, to summarize that. There are commands that we are given in Scripture. There are many. And let me make an example of enabling my brother or my sister to be obedient. The Scripture says to husbands to love your wife. We all know that. Scripture also says to wives to respect her husband. Now, if I'm a believing husband or a believing wife, then I understand that my spouse has commands from God about how to fulfill that role of either husband or wife. So if the husband's job is to love the wife, then how can the wife be helpful? Well, be lovable. I mean, that, that seems so simple. And, and I know that the, the audience I've got here, at least in the Willow Street family, that's already made you laugh. But it's very simple. Be lovable. And for the husband, if your wife's job is to respect her husband, then how can the husband help her? You already guessed it. Be respectable. Um, and that's a very simple and probably in some ways a little humorous uh, look at how we help each other. And you can apply that principle across the board. You know, if, if I had a, um, a problem if I was a kleptomaniac, for example, and you know I just could not help myself and uh, found myself stealing at every opportunity, then as a brother or sister in Christ, you would help me with my problem by not leaving things out that I could take that were not mine. <laughs> um, so you get the principle. And, and we find this to be true with encouragement. And so on the positive side, we have a very overt command. It's found in uh, Hebrews chapter 3, verse 13. It says, But encourage one another day after day, as long as it is still called today, so that none of you will be hardened by the deceitfulness of sin. Now, this is a very obvious starting place to see God's intent for us to encourage one another. And do we all need encouragement? Yes, we do. Because, well, we're going to examine the because. Well, I'll get there in a minute. But let me tell you something that happened this week. It's a very up to the up to the moment uh, example of encouragement. Our son sent me a picture. He, it was in a text message, and it was from a boyhood friend of his. And for many years, uh, I had the privilege of um, coaching uh, little league baseball teams. Uh, as my boys were growing up. And I did that not only to be with the boys, but the church that I served in Huntsville at the time 
took that on as an outreach project to the community, and we had the, the team practice on our church property. Uh, the church sponsored the teams, and, and I had a lot of boys come through there over those years. Um, many of them had very difficult homes. Uh, some of them had no father in the home. And it was a great opportunity to minister to boys uh, in addition to my own. And uh, our son has made contact uh, in his adult life with uh, one of those uh, boys that was on the baseball team. And his friend sent him a picture of a game ball that I had given him, oh gee, probably 20 years ago. I could not even recall today that I actually did that. And when I saw a picture of the ball, I remembered it. And it seemed at the time like such an inconsequential action. Um, but I had written the message there on that ball and I, I recognized the handwriting on the ball immediately because my handwriting's not very good. <laughs> and uh, I could tell that scratch was mine. And I had written a scripture verse on the ball and uh, given it, I'd written his name on it, and it was the game ball. And we did that every week. And, uh, you know, I never really thought that much about it. But, you know, seeing that ball 20 odd years later uh, made quite an impression on me. And it was an encouraging thing because I realized that, you know, actions that we take today, whether we think that they are significant or not, have a way of impacting people long after we've done them. And that was just a baseball, and that was just me, and that was not intended to be an encouragement to me, although it was, but it illustrates a larger principle that what we do and what we say and how we interact with each other will have long-lasting consequences, and it can often come back in a very positive way many years after we have taken a particular action or said an encouraging word. Now, again, a command from God is an essential activity or a practice for us. And that's what we're going to deal with here in encouragement. And kingdom encouragement is primarily from the Word of God. It's not just the superficial compliments that we might give each other, although those are important. But it needs to be primarily from the Word because the Word lasts forever. And the Word goes out from God and it always does its work. And, and we see that in Romans chapter 15, verse 4. There we see that for whatever was written in earlier times was written for our instruction, so that through perseverance, here it comes, and the encouragement of the scriptures, we might have hope. So our encouragement has a goal. When we encourage one another, our goal ought to be the hope that our brothers and sisters have in Christ and increasing that hope. So uh, we don't want to miss it. And God understands that we are creatures with a uh, an attention span that's way too short. Uh, so he gives us this command more than one time. Um, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, we read this, therefore comfort one another with these words. Now that word that we see in that verse is comfort can also be translated encourage. And so we encourage one another. We comfort one another. Uh, the Holy Spirit is sent to us as the comforter. He is also can be viewed and known as the encourager, the one who prompts us and encourages us to uh, kingdom obedience and kingdom accomplishment. And then uh, in the very next chapter in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, uh, we see this. Therefore, encourage one another and build up one another just as you are also doing. You know, and it's, it's about building up the body of Christ. And, and I don't do that as a whole, and you don't do it as a whole. We don't build the entire body up at once, not, not usually, unless we're talking to many, many people and encourage them in the Word, but we can do it one believer at a time. We can encourage each other and, and build one another up for the things that that sister or that brother is doing that matter for the kingdom. And they may not even know that we're noticing, but we do. And when we do, we should encourage them in that. And so encouragement is a necessity in the Christian life because you and I live in a sinful, fallen condition. We're, we're not the perfect 
uh, creations that, that God made in the Garden of Eden. We're, we're fallen. The world is not uh, in the same condition that it was in when God looked at all of it and said it was good. The, the world that we live in is fallen and impacted by sin. So therefore, we have to be obedient to what God tells us to do. And one of those things that he tells us that is essential to our, our survival and our service is encouragement. Uh, you may remember that uh, the book of James says, among many other things, that when you fall into various trials and temptations, and we all know that's not if you fall into those things, but it is when. They will happen. And sometimes we look at that and we want to be even discouraged because, hey, we, we know good things are not necessarily always around the corner. Um, but that's actually an encouraging statement. Uh, but there's more. Jesus said to his uh, disciples and to us that his followers would be persecuted and they would be hated. So these ought not to surprise us. But let me let me show you and share with you what is uh, recorded for us in First Peter chapter 4. There in verse 12, Peter said, Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery ordeal among you, which comes upon you for your testing, as though some strange thing were happening to you. Our, our faith is going to be tried, because when our faith is tried and found to be genuine, then that is a great encouragement to us and to others. And then in uh, John's gospel, he wrote in chapter 15, remember the word that I said to you, Jesus is speaking, a slave is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will also persecute you. If they kept my word, they will keep yours also. And then in 2 Timothy, the Apostle Paul wrote, Indeed, all who desire to live godly in Christ Jesus will be persecuted. Now, if we didn't have any other reason to know that encouragement was necessary for us, these verses would tell us that that we're going to face these difficulties, we're going to face trials, we're going to face persecutions, we're going to face temptations, and if we're going to do that successfully, then we need the encouragement that the family of God, that the body of Christ, can give to us as we face these things. And once again, encouragement is necessary because of our fallen and sinful condition. And Even though James wrote about our various trials and temptations, let me tell you something else that Jesus said. He said, these things I have spoken to you so that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but take courage or be encouraged, if you will. I have overcome the world. Now, there's a great deal of encouragement right there. And that's in John 16, 33, if you want to write that down and look at it later. Matter of fact, I would encourage you to write many of these down. And at least for our Willow Street family, uh, I'll be glad to share uh, the teaching outline with you. And you can have a record of all this. Just uh, put a note over there that you'd like to have it. And I'll put it somewhere where you can, you can find it and access it. But we have those words, encourage one another and build one another up just as you are also doing. Now, encouragement is necessary for other reasons. First, it facilitates first and second commandment love. What are the greatest commandments? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Second commandment is likened to it. Love your neighbor as yourself. And then Jesus expanded on that and actually took it to another level. On the night before he was crucified, we read in John chapter 13, verse 34, where he said, A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another, even as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples, if you have love one for another. And you see, what was termed the second commandment, which was taken from the Old Testament, love your neighbor as yourself, Jesus upgraded it greatly. Uh, <laughs> love one another as I have loved you. And, you know, it'd be one thing for me to love another person as I love myself, but it's, it's a different thing if I love another person the way Christ loves them. That is a whole step up. 
And if I am loving a person, then I am doing what's best for them. And that was the that was the entire purpose of the illustration that Jesus gave when asked about the two commandments. He gave the first, they readily agreed, and then the question was asked, who is my neighbor? And in order to illustrate the second commandment, Jesus gave us the parable of the Good Samaritan, the person who went out of his way, took of his own means, his own time, and cared for another person, not because it benefited him in any way, but because that person needed care. And so what we see there is a demonstration of how to love another. And then even so, Jesus says, love one another as I have loved you doing what is best for that person, not necessarily what's expedient or good or convenient for me. And very often we do that. What we do for the other person, as long as it's convenient or it doesn't put us out too much or things like that. But you see, Jesus loved us for our good all the way to the cross. And that's a stunning revelation. And so in this this idea of caring for one another and loving one another comes God's command for us to encourage one another. It's vital that we do it. Paul uh, wrote to the Colossian church and he, he wrote to them about sending Tychicus uh, to see them. And in uh, chapter four of that letter, verse eight, we read, for I have sent him to you for this very purpose that you may know about our circumstances and that he may encourage your hearts. And you see, kingdom encouragement is first about the Lord, and then it's about the fellow servant. You know, the, the real issue in Paul's sending Tychicus wasn't who was coming. It was the fact that he had a message for these believers to strengthen their faith, to encourage them in their work, and encourage their hearts not so that they would say how good Paul is or that how good Tychicus was, but they would be encouraged and emboldened and strengthened to continue serving the Lord. That was the purpose of the encouragement. And encouragement facilitates some other things as well. We've already read Romans chapter 4, uh, 15, verse 4, and it helps us to hope. But Encouragement also helps us in the arena of Christian discipline. And I would point your attention to Hebrews chapter 12, verses 5 and 6, to, to read, And you have forgotten, or excuse me, and you have forgotten the exhortation which is addressed to you as sons, quote, My son, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord, nor faint when you are reproved by him. For those whom the Lord loves, he disciplines, and he scourges every son whom he receives, end quote. And you see, sometimes we find ourselves in that place of discipline. We haven't obeyed like we should have at all points. Um, we need a corrective measure. Maybe we ignored the encouraging words of those around us who were obedient to encourage and we just didn't get it. It went by, it went over our head, whatever you want to say, we didn't get it. So we, we enter into this time of, of discipline. And, and very often when we're there, we may not even realize that it is discipline. And we will, you know, run with our prayer requests to our friends and our neighbors and our church members and say, you know, uh, y'all pray that I'll get out of this bad, bad circumstance, whatever it is. And it might be that I'm in a place of discipline and I need to be encouraged to endure it because it also is a working and a proving of my faith, which is more valuable than gold. And so encouragement can help me in discipline, but it can also help me with patience. Uh, how many Obviously, I can't see your hands if we were in church tonight. Uh, the Snickers would already be going around the table about uh, who has a, an issue or a challenge with patience. And some of you would be pointing at me, and I understand that. Uh, but if you look at 1 Corinthians chapter 13, you'll recognize that immediately as, as the great chapter on love. And we read there 
you remember love is patient, love is kind, love uh, endures all things, it bears all things, love is forgiving. Uh, so if I'm going to be a person who is patient as the Lord is patient and is patient with me beyond, much beyond what I deserve, then I need encouragement about that. You know, when, when I manage to get some of that out, then I need encouragement. When your your child, your husband, your wife, when when they're being a patient and exhibiting that godly quality, then uh, it'll be easier for them to do that again uh, if we encourage them in it. And that's another way that that encouragement is essential to us. It's also essential in kindness. Uh, it's interesting to me that uh, in Galatians chapter five, beginning in verse twenty-two, you'll recognize that as where we see the, the fruit of the Spirit. And you'll notice that kindness is up there uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 13 in the qualities of love, but it's also in the qualities or the uh, evidences of the fruit of the Spirit, that uh, there's love, joy, gentle, patient, uh, patience, and kindness. And we are to be kind even in the face of those who would be unkind to us. And we're not to, as Jesus said, you know, return insult for insult or injury for injury, but but we are to, you know, turn the other cheek. Let, you know, let the offense go by and be kind and, and demonstrate the spirit of Christ who is in us. And when we are obedient in this way, we, we let that spirit show through. It shines out of us. And whenever we do that, you know, that, that goes against our nature. Somebody wrongs me or you, and, you know, we, we immediately have this, this uh, reaction to, to get even uh, for revenge or whatever. But, you know, the Lord tells us to re return kindness for that. And so when we see each other do it, we need to encourage that because it will make it easier. If God has told me to do a thing, just like we began, then you know encourage that example when you see it whenever someone is being uh, obedient and doing what the lord commands them to do and so kingdom encouragement is about the lord first it's really not first about our fellow servant but it's about the lord it's about christ likeness and encouraging us to those things and it, it does it does fall on the ears of the heart of the servant because it's their heart that needs encouraging but but really it's not about them primarily, it's about uh, the Lord Jesus Christ and, and about what we should do for him in imitating him. Uh, essential kingdom in encouragement also facilitates sacrifice. Uh, we don't like to think about sacrifice, we don't like to think about pain and suffering, but uh, it's an undeniable fact of, of kingdom living and, and, and Christian life. There is a dying to self you know, uh, the Apostle Paul said, I died daily. Uh, we are to take up our cross and follow Christ. That is the instrument of death and destruction. I am to put to death, Paul says. This is active, ongoing. I am to put to death the deeds of the flesh, the, the thoughts of my fallen self. I am to put those things to death. I'm to crucify them, to mortify them, the word says. And that is a very active, aggressive term, and I'm to take those things and literally uh, sacrifice them, to kill them, and, it, and it's an active thing. It's not passive. It's not done for me. It's something that I do, so it's how I engage in this process that we call sanctification or becoming like Christ, but there is kingdom sacrifice that is part of our life, and whenever we are called upon to die to self, to take up our cross, that's not easy. And we don't need to go around telling each other that it is. Uh, that's just a lie. So don't say that it's easy, but when, when we see our brother or our sister engaged in that and we are uh, sharing our lives together, then we should encourage each other in those things that, that are denying of self and becoming more and more like Christ. Uh, that's another place that, that encouragement uh, become so essential. And encouragement helps us to realize Christ's purpose in living among us. Well, this one may surprise you a little bit, but uh, I hope not. Now, 
now that I've said his purpose in living among us, what's that got to do with encouragement? And you'll find that in John chapter 10, verse 10. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Now you see, part of Jesus' intention for us to have an abundant life isn't to wait until you know we get you know in the sky by and by. The abundant life begins now. And part of that abundance in life and living today is the encouragement that he commands from all of his people. Not just the preachers, not just the teachers, not just the deacons, not just whomever. He commands it from all of us. And that's part of his grace and his intention that we live an abundant life because we are, we are sharpened by the encouragement. As iron sharpens iron, that's what the, the word says we are to be to each other. And one of the ways that we are obedient to that command, or that we exemplify that command, is to encourage one another. And encouragement is also an essential activity for believers because it is God's healing balm. Um, notice in Proverbs chapter 16, Verse 24, pleasant words are a honeycomb, sweet to the soul and healing to the bones. Now, you know, we talk about laughter being good for the heart as a medicine, and it is. I, I, try, to, I try to practice that every chance I get. But encouragement is equally helpful to us, and we should be doing that. So that's just... Uh, an overview at best of why encouragement is necessary. And I hope you'll take advantage of the opportunity to go back and study some of that. But how do you apply that? You know, how does that relate to everyday practical living? How can I become a better encourager? And again, you know, it's kind of like my nose. It's on my face uh, and it's the obvious thing. But, you know, if I want to be obedient, and I understand that this is something that God requires my obedience in, it's essential for me to be an encourager, then I need to ask. Ask and you will receive. That's the message of, of the, uh, the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus said, ask and you will receive. And what do I ask for? I ask for obedience, for God to help me be an encourager. Now, if I am praying for God to help me be obedient at any point, do you think he wants to answer that prayer? Well, absolutely, he does. And so I can ask for a heart of obedience to be an encourager. Uh, I can ask for wisdom. Who needs encouragement today? I'm real good at just, you know, looking at my world and, and seeing, you know, what's involved in my world. You know, that's kind of how, you know, man comes equipped. But if I look up and look out, who needs encouragement out there? You know, God help me see that person. Give me wisdom to know uh, who needs to be encouraged. Uh, let me see with your eyes. Those kinds of prayers. And I can also ask for strength to, to see beyond myself, uh, again, to, to die to me and to see the needs of others. Another thing besides asking I can do is remember uh, some of us are having more and more challenges with that. I won't name any names, uh, but you're online. <laughs> but we need to remember that God delights in giving good gifts to his children. He delights in our obedience. And God will honor our prayers for strength and obedience because it is his desire to give us those things. So I can ask, I can remember, I can study, okay? Study to show yourself approved, a workman that needs not to be ashamed, but who can rightly divide the word of God. Well, I can also look in the scripture and find several great examples of encouragers. You could study the life of David and Jonathan. They were encouragers to one another. You could study the life of Barnabas. You'll notice in Acts chapter 4 that scripture calls Barnabas the son of encouragement. His life in ministry is a, is a great example of how to encourage others in their work for the kingdom. And then there is the idea of discipline. 
Now, you know, I, I was talking about spiritual discipline a while ago, but here I'm talking about a habit or a routine. Uh, those who are gifted with encouragement seem to do it, um, we say naturally, it's really supernaturally because it's a gift of the Spirit. But there are those among us who are gifted with the spiritual gift of encouragement, but others of us didn't get that gift. But it doesn't mean that we're exempt from the command. It's just like some of us have the gift of evangelism, but all of us have to be obedient to the command to share our faith and to share the good news of the gospel. So even though there's giftedness in some areas, and some of us have those gifts, we're still obligated to obey the commands and be obedient. And I can do some things that help me make or have a habit of being an encourager. I can set a reminder. Um, somebody near and dear to me uh, has uh, quite a few alarms set on her phone. <laughs> And those alarms uh, are for many, many things, but they go off and that's a reminder to do something. Uh, but you can put it on your phone, you can put it on your calendar, but however you do it, make a reminder to share at least one word of encouragement every day. It could be uh, an email, it could be a text message or a phone call. And before you share whatever it is that's on your list, remember to pause and pray and ask your Father to bless the effort. Uh, because it's for him that you do it, and uh, you certainly want his blessing. Then we also should be reminded that it is the word that does the work. You know, unless God inhabits something, uh, it's it's not going to be of any great uh, value. And, and God's word goes out from him, the scripture says, and always accomplishes the purpose for which he sent it forth. So it is the word that does the work, and, and God's promises are great, great sources of encouragement. And, you know, what scriptures have encouraged you? Uh, it's real simple, share them. Uh, what are you doing in your daily uh, devotional or Bible study plan? Share that. Uh, look in the Psalms. Uh, there's just, you know, uh, verse after verse, passage after passage in the Psalms that we would find encouraging to ourselves and something that would encourage our brother or our sister. But wherever you find it, share God's grace with others through his word, because that's what encouragement is. It's a, it's an, it's a measure. It's a, it's a, an expression of God's grace that we are being encouraged, even though we're not perfect to be all that God desires for us to be for his kingdom. And then we should be specific. You know, I, I shared with you earlier about the baseball, and that's a very specific example. But I've had others uh, in my own life, and I can only speak to them. Uh, I can't speak to your life, but you'll you'll remember some things, I'm sure, in your own in your own walk that, you know, some at times when people told me that um, they'd seen something going on in my life, and I had no idea anyone was watching. I, I didn't know anybody else knew, much less that they were paying that much attention to be able to come to me and say, in this particular case, I saw, and then they'd say whatever they saw, and then say, that was an encouragement to me, that was a blessing to me. And I, you know, I just would be kind of dumbfounded. Uh, I'd be grateful that you know, somebody noticed and that whatever I was going through could be used by God to bless another person. I'm always grateful for that, but um, it seems to put you on the spot a little bit, but at the same time, uh, unless they had that conversation, unless they were obedient to share, that, that encouragement that I would receive in those instances would never have come. And so we have to be able to to ask the Lord to take us outside of ourselves, take us outside of our comfort zone, and encourage those things that we see in our brothers and our sisters. Now, I realize that mostly I've got a Willow Street uh, audience here tonight. However, uh, there are others. Uh, I see them. And this will stay on the Facebook page for a while, so it will be uh, replayed and other people will see it. So. Uh, I'm not necessarily talking right here to our Willow Street crowd. You'll understand um, 
that in just a second. But if you want a really great place to begin practicing being an encourager, you know, you want to you want a trial run, you want an exhibition season, <laughs> um, then start with your pastor. Okay, your pastor is a great guinea pig. Okay, uh, learn on him. Uh, if his labor in the Word is encouraging you, then tell him. Uh, do it in person if possible, but but notes are okay too. And if you write a note, uh, don't demand a note in return. Just be the blessing that this servant of God needs. And I know many, many pastors, and I work with them day in and day out, and, and so many of them rarely hear a word of encouragement, and you just don't know uh, what that does to a person. Uh, you know, if, if they don't hear that, then it's it's self-defeating, it colors the world that they see, it colors how you do what you do, and, you know, when you get that, that, that ray of sunshine, that, that moment of blessing where somebody says, hey, I notice what you're doing, and I know it's a labor, and it's helping me, and I just wanted you to know, um, that is such a blessing. I, I, don't have, I don't have words to explain that to you, but uh, in keeping with the way we like to do things around here on Wednesday night, and since I'm the only one that's uh, here, I'll just do it for all of us. Um, but you know, if you, if you really would like to work your pastor to death, just encourage him often. That'll do the job. And, and then before long, you might have to get a new one. <laughs> All right. That's a, that's a humorous note on a serious subject. Um, but, uh, extending that, uh, be part of your church's, uh, encouragement team. Okay. Uh, ask for God to grow that team, you know, uh, be intentional about being an encourager. Uh, and then fight discouragement. You know, everyone that you speak an encouraging word to won't return the blessing. Now, I know that doesn't surprise you, but, uh, you know, if you don't see a, a return uh, on that, that encouraging word, don't be discouraged by the fact that it didn't come back. It's not about you. Uh, and remember this, that, you know, we're, we have to intentionally create a culture of encouragement in our churches and in the body of Christ. We shouldn't have to. We, we ought to understand, as we've been talking about, that this is a command and we all should be obedient to it. But uh, even if we understand that, it's kind of like, you know, turning the ship. It, it takes a, a good while to turn the ship from one direction to another. So, you know, we're not going to create a culture of encouragement in any local body of believers in, in a matter of six or seven days. So it, it's a long-term thing, and we need to be obedient to it, whether everybody else gets on or not. You know, if we never have an active, uh, aggressive culture of encouragement uh, in a local body, that should not deter me from being obedient, and it should not deter you either. So uh, understand that it takes a while to change the culture and build each other up in Christ, as we talked about earlier. And right there where we began. Do not grow weary in well-doing. That's where we started. And this is definitely well-doing. And then there's the area uh, we apply being an encourager in discernment. Okay, Be smart. Uh, don't create a problem when you attempt to encourage. Um, if you want to encourage a member of the opposite sex, then uh, include your spouse or and or the the other person's spouse uh, you're sending an email you know uh, CC your wife or your husband uh, keep the conversation open and proper and bless everybody and then here's something I'll just call the sneaker slogan okay I have issues with the word uh, and the company all together but that's a whole nother discussion but here's the sneaker slogan just do it you know, don't be deceived into waiting until you have everything that's just right in order to begin being obedient to God's command to encourage each other. That day's never going to come. Just get started and do it now. And remember, way back in the Proverbs, we find something very familiar. You can quote it. I really like the King James um, Translation the best is the one that I remember. 
but uh, the verse, Proverbs chapter 25, verse 11 says that a word spoken at the right time is like gold apples in silver settings. And that is so true. And God desires for us to be obedient. He intends that we encourage one another and that we should do it often. Look for the ways that we could encourage one another. And, and as is the case with everything that we do and that we try to apply, and you've heard me say this numerous times, start behind the front door at your house. You know, start, start encouraging there and let it go out from that point and uh, see what God will do in the lives and the hearts of those people around you as we become better encouragers. I hope that little uh, exercise helps you. Uh, again, if you'll put something over there in the chat or a, a private message, I'll do my best to uh, make sure you can get this um, and you can study some of that on your own. In the meantime, 